That's good. Now we will talk about the next group of the drugs, right? And next group of drugs which are very important antihypertensive drugs that is calcium channel blockers, right? Let me explain how the calcium channel blockers work. You must be knowing that calcium influx is required for the contractility of the heart. You know myocardial cells, myocardial cells have special calcium channels and voltage gated calcium channels allow the calcium to go in and this calcium triggers inside the myocardial cell to release of stored calcium which and that calcium eventually leads to actin myosin interaction and myocardial contractility, right. So there are drugs which can block the calcium channel calcium channels in the heart as well as these drugs can also block the calcium channels in the arterial smooth muscle because contraction of arterial smooth muscle is also dependent on calcium influx. These calcium channels which are specially blocked by calcium channel blockers these are called L type calcium channel L type calcium channels right. So, these L type calcium channels are blocked by the calcium channel blockers. Now, how the calcium channel blockers really reduce the blood pressure, right? We will discuss about that now. We have already discussed where calcium channel can uh, blockers can block the calcium channels in the myocardium as well as they can block the calcium channels in the smooth muscles of arterioles, right? Of course, when calcium channels in smooth muscles of arterioles are blocked, then calcium influx in the smooth muscle is reduced and then of course smooth muscles of the arterioles contract poorly. So when smooth muscles of arterioles are unable to contract well or in other words we say that smooth muscle after the application of the calcium channel blockers at smooth muscles of arterioles don't get enough calcium so they don't contract well or in other words we can say they are relaxed. When smooth muscles of arterioles are relaxed you can understand that total peripheral resistance for movement of the blood from arterial side to the venous side is reduced. So calcium channel blockers we can say number one what they are doing they are uh, reducing the calcium influx in yes influx in arterial smooth muscle and that will lead to reduced total peripheral resistance. I think remaining story you know when there is reduced total peripheral resistance you know diastolic blood pressure depend on mainly on total peripheral resistance. So that will eventually lead to reduced diastolic blood pressure. Is that clear? Secondly, calcium channel blockers also block the calcium channels on the myocardium, ventricular myocardium especially when those calcium channels are blocked then naturally calcium influx in myocardial cells is reduced and eventually that lead to reduced contractility of myocardium and when myocardial contractility is reduced it's very easy to understand then stroke volume will be reduced. So what we can say the second wing which is working is that there is yes reduced calcium influx in myocardium myocardium and reduced calcium influx in myocardium lead to reduced stroke volume which will eventually lead to reduced cardiac output and that will eventually lead to reduced systolic blood pressure. Is it clear? Really clear? Right? So these are the two main mechanisms how calcium channel blockers work. But one point which is very important that you have to understand and remember that some of the calcium channel blockers mainly work on the arterial smooth muscles and the other calcium channels which mainly work on the myocardial cells and still there are other calcium channel blockers which block the both sides. Let me tell you a classical uh, situation like this. Let's suppose here we put the heart and here we put your circulation. Uh, now this is a calcium channel in the myocardium and this is a calcium channel let's suppose on the arterial side. Is that right? Now there are some drugs which block the both sides equally, right? Classical example is deltiazem, deltiazem. This type of drug can block the smooth muscle calcium channels and myocardial, smooth muscle calcium channels and myocardial calcium channels with equal degree. But then there are other calcium channel blockers, for example, nephedipine. Have you heard of it? Nephedipine. Nephedipine mainly blocks arterial smooth muscle 
and it blocks very little on myocardial smooth uh, myocardial cells right then there is another like verapamil 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 has less action on blockage of smooth muscle but more action on blockage of calcium channels of heart is that right or if we really make a simpler diagram we can make it like this i think let me make a more simple presentation right here is your heart and here is your circulatory smooth muscle right here i write the name of the drug uh, number one okay first of all we write verapamil right verapamil has more action on the heart and less action on arterial smooth muscle then we come to the second drug and second drug is deltazem right it has almost same action on both areas right and then there is nifedipine nifedipine has less action on the myocardium but far more action on the arterial smooth muscle that is why when nifedipine is given it will lead to relaxation of coronary arterioles and other arterioles in the body as well that is why nifedipine is very very effective not only reducing the uh, blood pressure due to arterial constriction but it also is a very useful drug due to coronary vasospastic disease like prince metal angina in which there is a tendency for coronary vessels to undergo spasticity right and nifedipine can keep the arterial dilatation including the coronary arterial system as well is that right so now with this balance we can see that verapamil will reduce the blood pressure but mainly by reducing reducing the cardiac output so it reduces more systolic blood pressure but when you look at this with nifedipine it mainly relaxes the arteriolar smooth muscle so it mainly reduces the total peripheral resistance so it mainly reduces the diastolic blood pressure am i really clear that so, uh, now one thing is very important that if you are giving calcium channel blockers and if you don't want to produce negative inotropic action and negative chronotropic action then you will use this drug is that right because this is a calcium channel blocker with minimum action on the heart am i clear no problem up to this okay so this these are a few words about the mechanism of action of calcium channel blockers as antihypertensives 